Hello, welcome to It's Your Life. I'm your host, Dr. James J.C. Cooley, and I I got to say we got a fantastic show uh, coming your way today, and uh, this guest that's going to be on our show is absolutely sensational. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm joking. <laughs> Actually, the, 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 ho the host is also the guest today, but I will be placed in a guest seat and uh, Michelle, my beautiful co-host, will be hosting the show pretty much today. So I, I got to say, Michelle, how are you doing? I'm doing good. I'm so excited to be interviewing you today. I mean, it, I've done it before, but it's it's we're going to learn a lot about Dr. James Cooley. The public's going to know that things they are familiar with and things that are not familiar with but this is going to be an exciting show so we're really excited and we also got another family member that's uh going to uh join us today and uh this uh my my famous cousin actor star just a wonderful person uh, marlene cooley uh you know so uh, uh she's going to uh help michelle out as as it relate to uh, hosting the show. So uh, I'm looking forward to this. All so. right. Hello, James and Michelle. It's great being here with you. So I'm excited too, Michelle. You know, James is a very interesting person. So we got some questions for you, James. You better you know, be ready. I, I, I'm, <laughs> I, I'm, a little, I'm a little nervous on my own show because um, <laughs> I don't know what you all are going to ask me. But Michelle, do you want to just take over and just introduce the show? Well, yes. Um, thank you, everybody. Well, the title of today's show is Country Boy, City Boy, A Journey That Ain't Over Yet. So the purpose of the show today is getting to know veteran, entrepreneur, author, motivational speaker, television and radio host, educator, Dr. James Cooley. And we're going to talk about how his upbringing has influenced him and that that's detailed in his audio book, Country Boy, City Boy, A Journey That Ain't Over Yet. And we're going to talk about his how his experiences in the United States Navy shaped his life and the 
and the and the lessons he learned and the lessons he goes by today and talk about his philosophies in life and also discuss his nonprofit organization and his mission in life. So let me tell you guys a little bit about Dr. James Cooley. Dr. James Cooley, motivational speaker and retired Navy officer, 23 years, was born in Chattanooga, Tennessee. He is a community activist, dedicated speaker, husband and father. He is the host of the James Cooley Show, It's Your Life, live streaming on E360 TV and over 16 streaming platforms. He's also the host of the national live radio podcast, The James Cooley Show, It's Your Life and the author of Country Boy, City Boy, A Journey That Ain't Over Yet. He's also written Your Pathway to Enlightenment and the Book of Knowledge. Dr. Cooley is the president and CEO of J.C. Cooley Innovation Solutions, LLC, and the J.C. Cooley Foundation Options and Opportunities slash the Choice Program. He began his career as an enlisted sailor in United States Navy. He has hard work and extreme dedication to excellence in his background. Dr. James Cooley was presented with a 1992 Senior Enlisted Admiral's Gallery and Ranking Award of Merit for the Cooley Fitness Show Breakfast Tutoring Program for underprivileged and academically at-risk students, the first of its kind in the United States. He was also selected as one of the first George H. Bush's 1,000 Points of Light recipients for Outstanding Community Service. Dr. Cooley, he was the recipient of the ABC Channel 10 Salute to San Diego Military Heroes Award in April 2015. He has an honorary doctorate of philosophy degree from Trinity International University Ambassadors. And there's so much to learn about Dr. James Cooley. And that's why he's the guest on the show today of his own TV show. And we're going to ask him and dig in some questions. Right, Marlon? That's right. Let's do it, Michelle. Well, let's just start. So... Well, Dr. First Cooley. of all, first of all, I don't know who you just introduced. I don't even know that. <laughs> <laughs> no, who but uh, it's, it's it's nice being on this end of of uh, being introduced because you you do it so well, and I, I see why the guests uh, always cherish uh, the way that you uh, introduce them to the show. So I I want to thank you as well. Well, thank you, Dr. Cooley, and we are very privilege and honor to have you on your own show. So let's just begin and let's just talk about the beginning. So can you tell our listen, our listeners and our audience a little bit about your upbringing? Are you there, uh, James? Dr. Cooley? Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. I said I was born. Uh, the seventh or uh, ten kids uh, by a mother who had six different fathers of her children and she was never married and um, she uh, did everything in her power to make sure that uh, she shared the love and that we all felt uh, just as important as the other one uh, but um, my mom was not able to take care of ten kids uh, by herself so she chose uh, myself and my brother Jerry, who was uh, 15 months older than I were, uh, and she sent us to Graham, Alabama, to live with my aunt, Aunt Jen, Uncle Robert, and my grandmother. And um, from that point, I was six years old at the time, and a lot of things that I was used to in Chattanooga, Tennessee. You know, even though we lived in the projects and we had all of that stuff, we had running water, we had an indoor toilet, we had all of those things. And uh, we had, uh, you know, food because we was uh, on the government and where they used to, you go, you go and they give you food and all that, et cetera. But when I got to Alabama, you know, on that long ride down that dirt road, 115 miles later, as we was riding into that in this 1956 Bel Air, uh, you saw all the big trees you saw all of these things. You saw animals. And once I got to the form that we was on, I went in and we had no indoor plumbing. We had an outhouse. We had no electricity. We had uh, a wooden burn stove. We had some chickens. We had a, a donkey. Uh, we had uh, a cow. Uh, but most importantly, what we had was love. 
love. And um, not saying that that was completely missing uh, from Chattanooga, but um, but things that were required where I was at in Graham, Alabama, we didn't have to do any of those things back in Chattanooga because just it, it work at the I mean, you didn't have to do anything. I mean, you wasn't planning on doing anything. So I learned my work ethics mm-hmm. by going to Alabama and and it began at six years of age in a place that I thought was a foreign country because uh, I was used to having lights and water that was in the house and a toilet where I didn't have to walk uh, 150 yards toward a pastor. Mm-hmm. So that created a, a serious um, foundation for me for developing work at this. Wow, talk to Cooley. So you live with your aunt and uncle and also your grandmother lived there. Can you tell us, just kind of summarize the lessons you learned from your grandma? Well, the lessons started uh, at six years old, just like I said. Mm-hmm. Uh, my grandmother uh, was a wonderful, wonderful one. And uh, once my brother Jerry left to, to head back to Chattanooga, I stayed there uh, right around seven years old. My grandmother was older, like in her 80s. And a lot of times, uh, my aunt and my uncle, they did not have a whole lot of time for her. Uh, but I was always there. And um, I became the apple of her eyes, and she was the apple of my eyes. We were like best friends, and she taught me everything. Um, She taught me how to listen. She taught me how to love. She taught me how to care. Uh, She taught me all the folk songs and uh, rituals that um, only in the South you get an opportunity to to learn those things. Uh, But most importantly, she taught me to care about everything and everybody, whether it's an animal or whether it's the chicken that we were going to eat. I mean, just uh, everything that was around you, she taught me the lesson of love. That's wonderful. I guess that's just like about, you know, just being lovable and love one another, you know? So I'm going to ask you something, you know, as you were being raised, you went through middle school, high school, what made you enlist in the Navy? Well, you know, that's uh, probably uh, a journey on down the road. Uh, but before you, before you ask that question, I want to talk about the schooling in the beginning uh, when I was in Alabama. Um, and um, in Alabama, our school, we only had a, a school house. What I mean by that, um, all grades from one through 12 was in the same room, the same little school house. Okay. So um, what what happened was as a, the younger kids, which I was part of, and the older kids, uh, they was being taught the same thing at the same time. So we learned how to, um, I mean, we learned the things that the older kids learned, uh, which kind of gave us a little head start um, uh, above our age group because whatever was taught to them, we had an opportunity to learn. And so I had an opportunity to uh, pick up a lot of things along with the other kids and which led me to your question, which we're going to come to later once I decided to go back to Chattanooga and in and, and, and middle school, I mean, elementary, finish up elementary, middle school and high school. And the Navy came way down the line because we still had a lot more upbringing that we had to, had to do okay. before the decision was even um, thought about. And that's interesting. I'm sorry I brought that. I guess because I look at you as a great veteran. So that was on my mind. I wanted to ask you that. But that's very interesting about your education. Um, I know we've seen some films, maybe that one film called Sounder. I think Cicely Tyson was in it. And her son wanted to get education. 
And when he got that education, he was in the room, like you said, from what, grade what, first through the 12th. And that's very interesting to know that, that you experienced that. Um, one more, I just want to ask you another question about that education experience. Um, was there a lot of students in the room with you? I mean, all different ages or what? Oh, yes. Um, I, I would say there probably was about 50, maybe, students. Uh, wow. And they, they ranged from uh, six years all the way up to 18 years of, of age. And um, you, you had... Uh, a couple of teachers that had to teach each and every last one of those different groups you know, in the same, uh, we call it schoolhouse, but it was just one big room. <laughs> and um, <laughs> uh, yeah, it was, it was, it was uh, age from six all the way up to 12, uh, 12th grade. So first grade to 12th grade. But you know, we're going to take a station break. We're going to take a station break and we're going to come back. And uh, I, I'm going to turn it back over to uh, uh, Michelle and Marlon, and uh, we're going to pick it up from there. It's your life. I'm Dr. James J.C. Cooley, and I'm a little afraid to come back to find out what they're going to ask me. I see you after the break. Noah Dingley here, producer of The James Cooley Show, It's Your Life. And the new audio version of James' book, Country Boy, City Boy, A Journey That Ain't Over Yet, is a must-have. James shares his true life story of struggle and success in America. It's both a cautionary tale and a roadmap to achieving the American dream. Get the new audio version of Country Boy, City Boy, A Journey That Ain't Over Yet, by James Cooley on Amazon.com or wherever audiobooks are sold. James Cooley. I am the founder and CEO of the J.C. Cooley Foundation, Options Opportunities Last and Choice Program. Our primary mission is to help build the foundation of our youth and young adults and communities. And we encourage everyone to dream big, think big, and be big at everything you do. And the way that you do that is, first of all, you got to believe in yourself. You have to believe in yourself. You have to know that you are here for a purpose. You also have to be able to step out your comfort zone and do things that you that you probably didn't think that you can do. Hello, welcome back to It's Your Life. Uh, I'm Dr. James uh, J.C. Cooley, and uh, wow, uh, this is uh, strange being on this side of the <laughs> You know, being the, the interviewee opposed to being the interviewer, you know, so, uh, you know, this, this is fun. It's fun. And, uh, and Michelle, I see Katie just uh, asked me a question. Yes, we have um, someone in the audience ask a question. Katie, um, Dr. Cooley, can you talk a bit about what farm life looked like and how your aunt whipped off the head of a snake in the chicken coop. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. So uh, I was uh, about seven years old. Mm. And uh, I'm have to go ahead on and I'm going to have to tell the truth on this one. So I might be a cuss word or two to come out. And normally I don't do that. But um, at the age of seven, uh, we was gathering eggs in the chicken house. And uh, anybody know farm life, if you go in, you have all these hens and they land the eggs. And when you walk by, because you do it every day, five o'clock in the morning, six o'clock in the morning, the hen jump up, get off the, the eggs so you can gather them. They they proud of that. So you, you grab the eggs and you put them in the basket. You go to the next one and they do the same. They jump up and move out. And they get, usually get the eggs. And so you do that uh, for all of them. This particular day, we were gathering eggs. And uh, this one particular hen, she was shaking her. Her wings was out, you know, like kind of frozen. And my Aunt Jen looked and said, 
Junior, Junior, then she leaked over when she, she dipped the snuff, teacher. She said, Junior, there's a snake on that chicken ass. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, I'm looking at it like, like uh, okay, uh, how, do, how do you know that? I didn't see it. <laughs> and then, then I got another song. Uh, how, how you know a snake is under that chicken ass? She said, this, this is what I want you to do. I want you to move to the side. And just move to the side. Get out the way, boy. Get out the way. <laughs> and she went over there, did the chicken like that. The chicken didn't move. She reached over, grabbed the chicken, threw it this way. It was a brown chicken snake under the chicken mm -hmm. butt that was swallowing the egg. <laughs> she grabbed that chicken. It reached out and grabbed the side of the head and thought, boom, boom, boom. Boom! Until the the snake head broke from the body, and she dropped dropped the head of the snake. I think that I think the chicken egg was still in it. In, 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 oh. in, <laughs> and I'm thinking that, wow! <laughs> I had never seen wow. I had never seen nothing like that. I had never seen bravery like that before, and mm -hmm. I know but, I couldn't do it. <laughs> but, 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 Me, Michelle. But, but the point is this. Mm -hmm. My aunt, and this is how life was on the farm. Mm -hmm. uh, she was going to do everything in her power, regardless of the situation, to protect her family. You know, to yeah. protect her family, even if it re meant reaching down. She know that chicken snake couldn't bite her because mm -hmm. <laughs> the teeth is always back in the back. She wasn't afraid of, uh, but uh, that's and that's what that's what uh, uh, Katie is talking about, and not just that, but a lot of things uh, that happen on the farm. I mean, you have to get up, and you have the hogs, and you have to take them, feed them their slop. You have to go and get the hay for the horse or the mule. Um, it's it, it just uh, farm life. Your food, like you, you got to go catch it. I'm talking about just like the, the uh, you, you have to go out there and catch your own food. I'm talking about rabbit, squirrel, possum, mm. uh, um, and you got chickens, or you go fishing. Yeah, mm -hmm. you you you, um, you grow your own corn and and um, everything that you have is is uh, you have to be self sufficient. Most and definitely, because we didn't have any money uh, or anything like that, but survival. Is is how you you survive. You you have to understand that um, you. That's just how it is. On well, the, I could imagine. I, I could. Well, I can't imagine because I've never experienced that before. But <laughs> let's let's jump here to your your service in the United States Navy. First of all, and, and Marlon kind of um, brought it up in the last segment. As a young man, why did you decide to list in the United States Navy? And can you tell us about your early experiences in the Navy? Mm -hmm. Can we front? Dr. Cooley? James? We have a little technical difficulties here. Um, yes. Dr. Cooley, can you hear us? Okay, stay tuned, audience. Okay, well, um, kinda, Dr. Cooley? Uh, we kind of lost uh, connect. Yes, he's so, back. So can you ask that question again? You said, why did yes. I mention the Navy. What made you what made you decide to enlist in the United States Navy? And can you tell audience about your experience, your early experience in the Navy? Well, let's talk about uh, making the decision to go into the Navy. Mm -hmm. uh, after high school, um, just like with many, we don't know what we 
or expected or what we we're going to do. In the case of myself, we did not have money to go to college. Um, and it wasn't expected that you do, do that anyway. Uh, so uh, I had a few friends, especially my best buddy on earth, uh, Billy Harper. We decided prior to graduating that we was going to go into the Navy. And um, uh, we was going to go into the Navy. And um, but a strange thing happened during football season. Billy um, kind of broke his leg pretty bad. And they, they said that he was not going to qualify for the Navy. So I went in the Navy anyway, uh, just to, um, I mean, I had to do something. I had to pick a career choice. So mm -hmm. I chose to go into the Navy. And I had never left home before. Uh, my whole world was, other than Graham, Alabama, Chattanooga, Tennessee, one time we had left and went on a school trip to Florida, but that's a different story. But uh, going into the Navy, doing something uh, that um, took a lot of courage because, because many of us never left home. I decided to go into the Navy and was afraid when I first got there and um, still didn't have any directions. Uh, but uh, once I got there, I felt initially that everybody coming from everywhere else that they knew more than I did and they were better than me and all of that, all that good stuff. But uh, once I got into the Navy, I discovered very quickly that no one was better than anyone else. And there was a sense of pride that um, we all had, that we, we took care of each other. Uh, kind of like a brotherhood or sisterhood or whatever that that is. And I learned to love the Navy. And um, I decided that uh, I was going to stick around for a while, at, at least uh, the first enlistment. And um, I, I stuck around for the first enlistment, you know, and uh, had to make a decision. And I decided that I was going to get out because I wanted to be an actor and, and all this other type of stuff. Um, and that didn't work out like I planned. So, uh, I went back into the Navy, uh, was the only out for a short length of time. And, um, I tell you, once I got back in, got my mind focused, I said, I'm going to make this the best possible, uh, career choice that I could make. And that was early in my Navy career. And I just started from there. Uh, can I hear Marlene? Her, her mic is off. Oh, she might be muted. <laughs> her mic is muted. Uh, can you hear me now? Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Hear we can. Yes. <laughs> okay, I, was, I don't know what happened there, but you know this is live television. <laughs> so, um, anyway, I want to ask you, because the Navy, um, I think that's wonderful how you enlisted, how you went in there. Um, I just have to say this real quick. My father also was in the Korean War in the Navy. So I respect you to the utmost, uh, James. But I want to ask you this, too, because we do hear this from some veterans. Um, did you have any negative encounters of racial discrimination in the Navy um, or after you retired after the Navy or anything like that? Yes. Um I had several different uh, encounters uh, of racial discrimination, especially uh, when I be started becoming more successful uh, in the Navy. Uh, sometimes um, uh, when, when, when you are uh, successful and you're moving up toward the change, sometimes people don't like that. And um, they do certain things to uh, sabotage uh, your potential growth. And so uh, I, I don't want to talk about uh, any of those situations right now because in my new book uh, that's coming out uh, hopefully by in January, it's all, right. all about, it's all about the, the Navy uh, pretty much. 
And so, uh, and all of those encounters uh, that uh, I'm talking about right here would be outlined in detail uh, in, in that particular book. All right, so we can't wait to hear that or read it. <laughs> Uh, it's so, uh, and that's uh, Katie. Katie Ismail mm -hmm. uh, is uh, she helped me out with the first book, Country Boy mm -hmm. Journey, that ain't over yet. Uh, and uh, we have teamed up again for the follow on book, um, The Journey Continues. You know, so uh, very excited about that. Yeah. And uh, I'm very excited about just a couple of projects that we're working on right now. Marlon, that uh, uh, we're going to be coming out with uh, another book that I'm working on. Um, it's uh, called What's in the Heart of This Black Man. Um, mm -hmm. That's going to come out uh, soon. And I'm also working on another piece, What's in the Heart of a Black Man. Um, and that's uh, Dr. Tanisha Berry uh, project. So uh, it's going to be a lot of things that's going to uh, be talked about in, in both of but for those books, we're all three of them. So, uh, yeah, I talk more about the Navy. Guy. You're a busy guy, talk. Dr. Q. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but I tell you, we're going to have to take a station break, uh, and we're going to come back and continue to uh, talk to, well, you guys going to talk to me. <laughs> uh, but... Uh, I'm looking forward to it. And so we're going to take a station break. But if you got any questions that you, you want to ask uh, myself or Marlon or Michelle, uh, by all means, or whichever platform you, you're watching this on, go to the comments portion, uh, put in and your question, and you can ask me any questions that you want to. I, actually, I encourage you to do that. Uh, so it's your life. I'm Dr. James Cooley. We'll be back shortly after the break. Welcome to E360 TV, the live streaming and on-demand destination for influential voices and enlightened audiences. We offer trending, grassroots, and purpose-driven content across a diverse range of interests. E360 TV is more than just watching programs. We offer the ability to interact with live shows connecting audiences to real, authentic influencers and storytellers while streaming to millions of devices. Real experiences. Raw conversation. One destination for it all. E360 TV.
Hello, welcome back to It's Your Life. I'm, I'm your host, uh, Dr. James J.C. Cooley, and uh, I, I kind of believe that I'm on the other side of the fence today, and I'm kind of loving it, <laughs> you know, because it makes me think, make me think about certain things that, uh, you know, I have experienced and things that um, help shape the person that I am today and all of the lesson learns uh, that uh, we encounter as we growing up, as we gather in experience, as we develop in our personality, as we develop in our character. It's like I always say, character is the most important thing that you have. Uh, but sometime before you develop uh, the person that you are, uh, you have to experience certain things to shape your values, your ethical systems and just shape who you are so um this is also helping me out and i'm gonna turn it back over to the ladies yeah and well, i'm glad you enjoy being on the other side being the interviewee now james <laughs> let's talk about well the title of today's show is country boy city boy a journey that ain't over yet you know, it was in a paperback, hardcover book, and now it's in an audio book. So first I want to ask, what made you decide to write the book? How did your family react? And part two, what was it like doing the audio book? Okay, mm. so uh, I think you missed uh, it, it's an uh, ebook, soft copy, mm -hmm. hard copy, and we uh, redid uh, a lot of the chapters and the and the uh, audio book, which mm -hmm. actually we added uh, more chapters to that. Okay. So uh, mm -hmm. uh, to um, answer your question, the reason why I wrote the book was because um, I had this story that was in me uh, for a long, long time that I felt that had to be told. Um, everybody got a story, I believe. And if you just keep that story to yourself, I don't believe that you can help benefit others because people might be experiencing the same uh, things uh, that you might have been experiencing during your upbringing, uh, during the life, or maybe even right now. And if you share those ideas and you share those things, on what it was like growing up, what it was like coming from a city, which is Chattanooga, you know, where things are completely different. And switching at an early age to the country, there's two different worlds out there, uh, but there's also two different things that we learn um, uh, as it relate uh, to that. So I felt that I, I needed to write um, the book based on the things that I, I knew, a lot of things that wasn't right that I, I did not think was right, especially family dynamics. Uh, Michelle, I know you asked that. And, um, you know, um, did some people get mad about me writing a book, family members? And, uh, yeah, because some of the things that uh, my family went through, I'm talking about, and I say it in the South, um, sometimes, you know, family like to keep things in the family. I mean, like the cousin marrying cousins and this and that and all, all this old type of stuff. And I, I, I felt that that needed to be talked about because um, uh, it, even though we felt it, Today it wasn't right, but it may, maybe it was right back during that time frame. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. That um, most people that in that little area and in the south and southern places uh, are, are related. I mean, I'm talking about truly related, and so that portion uh, was uh, very touching to talk about. Uh, but um, in one's history, in one's, I mean, you have to be true to yourself, you have to be true to your kids and you have to be true to society. So I, I wrote that and explained that in, in my book. 
And then I expanded on a lot of these things in the audio book uh, that uh, we just released uh, that, uh, I mean, but it went into more detail. And you asked a question about uh, the difference in doing the audio book and the regular book. Well, mm -hmm. it's a different mindset. I mean, so uh, in writing the book, you know, it's a Katie, Katie is my, uh she kept me focused she kept me on track she made sure that uh we covered everything in details uh for as the manuscript for as uh the outline and the flow um so that was with katie working with katie was i'm telling you was easy uh easy and because she's uh that's what she do i mean she knows how to uh, write books, write uh, all of these type of things, and she taught me a lot. Now, with Jordan, with the with the audio book, he is brilliant as well, uh, but he's a perfectionist. And uh, in the audio book, I found it to be tough uh, because um, you have to, especially when I narrated it myself, and uh, my producer, which was Jordan made sure that we stayed on track and if it was any portion of the book that you know i i think i nailed this portion and i would read it and you know think i got it and it's like wow that was, that was pretty good and i do it again <laughs> i mean he, did it, he had to go back <laughs> i said you didn't record that no i wanted to hear you say it first <laughs> and so that was tough uh, but it was also rewarding uh, to be able to tell your story, uh, to be able to show e your true emotions as you uh, telling your story opposed to writing your story. Uh, so the difference is in writing your story. Yeah, you can write write these things down based on how you feel. And this, but when you're doing your audio book. You telling your story and the emotions, the emotions comes out. Uh, case in point, Michelle is, uh, you know, my my aunt Jen, uh, or my grandmother. My grandmother always mm -hmm. said, "Come here, baby. Come over here, baby. Won't you? Won't you lay here, baby?" Mm -hmm. You said. Boy, 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 you, 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 you special, baby. You special. You gonna show the world one day that you special. I mean, so you can illustrate that. Yes. Uh, when you're telling your story, uh, for as audio book portion of it, but uh, uh, when you're writing it, people have to think about it and try to figure out how you feel about that. Right, right. That, that was a good, uh, uh, very good uh, acting right there. Because <laughs> what you said about the audio book, you do, you do have to give those kind of emotions. But I want to ask you again, I think I kind of heard a little bit of some of uh, the reason why you wrote the book, you want other people to relate to it, because it's a lot of people that might be going through the same thing that you went through. So that was very good what you said about that. But I'm kind of changing the subject a little bit because this is very interesting. I want to know why you uh, wanted to start a nonprofit, the J.C. Cooley Foundation. Tell me a little bit about that, James. Sure, sure. Why, why should, uh, I want to start a nonprofit just uh, as I was thinking that I know what I had to go through as as kids, as a kid. And I did not have a father figure or I did not have that poly role model uh, to be there to guide me, to teach me, to lead me. And I know it, it was kind of tough uh, on me not having that, that, that father or that male figure around. Or in, in a lot of cases with young women, not having a mother or not getting attention or et cetera, to make sure that they stay on track when they difference from um, the path. Mm -hmm. And I uh, I had to learn the, long, the hard way. 
And once I uh, retired from the military, and as I ventured out on doing a lot of other things, it was always on my mind that uh, I need to do something to help uh, kids, young men, young women, young adults that might have been feeling lonely, left out, not having any type of directions uh, mm -hmm. to go toward and not having the foundation to understand that you can build upon things if you believe in yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, if you believe in yourself, you can develop all of these things. And, and so I wanted to give back uh, based on how I feel, I wanted to show um, <clears throat> uh, our youth and our young adults that you can do anything that you set your mind to. You can do anything mm -hmm. that you set your mind to. And yeah. I want to start a foundation that help them develop those skills, help them uh, to uh take all the collaborations that they might be having on the inside of their, their, their minds and to have the confidence to share them. So I created this uh, nonprofit uh, and it's based on what we call the four C's. And the four C's stands for create, collaborate, commit with confidence. Again, the four C's create, collaborate, commit with confidence in everything that you do and mm -hmm. i believe that, uh through the foundation and if you can teach that and instill that in our youth and young adults that create the big c that i talked about earlier everything is based on character mm -hmm. i mean so it, it was uh to build a uh, character to build that you can uh to uh help people discover that uh, you need to dream big, think big, and be big at everything that you do. And uh, that's the primary reason why we created that. And we created that in order to uh, build those skills, but also reward uh, youth and young adults as they grow, because um, with the J.C. Cooley Foundation, we have given away over 165 scholarships wow. so it's we call them you can scholarships and, <laughs> uh, and a lot of you kids based on getting that foundation and knowledge and understanding that were probably not thinking about going to school uh mm -hmm. they went to school and i can tell you and michelle knows as well that at least 60 65 percent of the kids that we gave scholarships to graduated from college that's great <laughs> you know so graduated from college but i can tell you we're going to take a station break i'm going to take a station break and, and michelle i know that uh, I'm, I'm looking at your private chat we got to take a station <laughs> break. don't come back and we're going to pick it up we're going to pick this up and talk a little bit more about it it's your life i'm dr james jc cooney we'll be back shortly after the break We'll be back shortly, shortly after the break. Life is a series of circles and cycles, phrases and stages. These experiences teach you the lessons of life. You can either ignore them or embrace them. Welcome to It's Your Life with James Cooley. James is a motivational speaker, author, military veteran, and founder of the J.C. Cooley Foundation. James is here to equip you to strive for greatness and overcome adversity. It's time to get you equipped today for the challenges of tomorrow. Now, here's the host of It's Your Life, James Cooley. It's your
Hello, welcome back to this new life. Uh, I'm, I'm Dr. James A.C. Cooley. And you know, I tell you, uh, this is absolutely wonderful. Uh, but uh, Michelle and Marlon, I'm gonna ask you guys to just talk it up for about a minute, minute or so. I'm gonna go off camera for a second or so. And so you guys just talk it up and, and uh, you know, just talk about some of the things that uh, you guys heard me say that might be important. Give me one minute. Well, I'm also going to we're also going to talk about um, we're going to kind of segue into what this last segment is going to really focus on about James being the producer and Marlon, you know, just collaborating on the mm -hmm. many plays and scripts that um, they have worked on in the past and plan on continuing to do. So Marlon, can you tell us a little bit about that? How, you know, Lisa, um, let's talk about the, the first play that you and James um, collaborated on and um, how did you guys get it together? And when he comes back on, we're gonna just show like a clip from one of these amazing short films that you guys <laughs> did together. So can you kind of talk about that? Okay, well, you know what? I'm gonna talk about the one about Effie. Why not? Let's talk about yeah. Effie. Uh, -huh. uh Effie on the other side of the gun and that was written by uh, Gwen Wright and um, I just had an idea and I talked to James about it. I said James what you think about this idea let's let's produce a play here for our community and he liked it and he was like okay let's do it so it was like um a, 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 what do I know? I want to call it theater dinner because we also had, remember we had some great food there, oh, yeah. <laughs> great audience. It was just, uh, it was just really a fun time that what we did and we produced it. We had a lot of, uh, we had great actors. I, I believe it was what about five of us. Cause it's not, you know, it was a one act play and it was very successful. And then we got to talking about, you know what, uh, me and the writer. And I said, you know what, you know, let's do a little short film about it. Mm -hmm. And uh, Gwen was like, okay, let's do that. I said, well, you know what, let's run it through James, you know, because James likes to do things like that. And maybe we can ask him to, uh, you know, be the, uh, the executive producer on that. Mm -hmm. And it was just a short, we were just kind of experimenting. And he was like, okay, hey, let's do it. You know, we did the play, we were successful. Why not? Let's do the short film. So we, uh, we did the short film and um, um, I submitted it. It also, but when we did the short film, we shot it in 2019. Mm -hmm. But of course, you know, here come old COVID came through. So, you know, we had to kind of stop a little bit. What we were doing, I was putting it on the, uh, to the film festivals. Mm -hmm. And um, I took it to a few film festivals. And I believe uh, LA Film uh, and Hollywood, they were very interested. So we had a screening there, uh, mm -hmm. along with short films. And uh, the people really, really loved it. Um, I submitted to a couple of other places um, and we won a couple of awards, online awards with Effie. Okay. And it took me about, you know, like five minutes. It's just a real short thing that we wanted to do. Um, and then we did another film, do you, I mean, another play. Um, um, I'm trying to let it come to my mind. You know, okay. what about, Michelle. Remember the other film, um, the other short uh, play that we did? Yes, it's, it's, I'm, I'm trying to remember it. It's, uh, I think it's my age, but I'm trying to remember what it is. <laughs> but, you know, <laughs> my, because we changed the name a couple of times. And, oh, yes. Uh, that was really good, too. Matter of fact, that was the issue uh, about hidden abortions, if you oh, remember yes. that. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it's such a hot topic right now, you know, that mm -hmm. people are talking about. And it, it's, it was also a period piece. Um, also, the films that Gwen write, she writes a lot about period pieces. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we, we did that. We produced that. But we didn't do a film on that one. Um, oh, oh here comes James. He's coming oh. back. James, tell us some more things that we're going to be doing. About well, Effie. Yeah, you, you, uh, you was, you was uh, uh, talking about... Uh, uh, a couple of, of films that we had done. Uh, you talked about Effie on the other side of the gun. Yes. But uh, we, we we also uh, did Effie. Uh, right, that's the one we talked about, yes. Yes, yes. so we did Effie. Now, I do have a, a little a clip of Effie, but um, yeah. it was just great having um, great actors, especially my cousin right here that, that you guys get ready to see. <laughs> Uh, uh a little bit of of what what she is doing and what she's been doing 
But uh, yeah, we have done uh, uh, a couple of uh, plays, major plays, uh, and um, this play in particular led up to the short film uh, of Effie on the other side of the gun. I want everybody to uh, check this out because uh, the short film that we have, uh, just like Marlon had mentioned, it's been it's in a lot of film festivals, uh, and uh, we still going to continue to push push that. Yes. And, uh, this is this is a quick scene because I know we're running out of time uh, from uh, the lynching of Effie Childs. Now you hit me real good because I ain't good at talking how I feel. And there ain't many things in this world I care about. But I care about you. <laughs> and living in the South. We knew what we were up against. And I ain't scared of no wrong. And if it mean you and Tammy, y'all go live your lives in peace. <coughs> go on now. Yeah, this ain't right. They have Effie, what you gonna do with that? Go on in the back of you. Let me handle this now. <laughs> Effie! Go on! <laughs> ain't no niggas in here. Man ain't the one you looking for. I killed Mr. Frank. Man had nothing to do about it. Now I got the bat, I beat him with, to prove it. Now leave my brother out of it. He ain't here. And he long gone with his wife, who's carrying Mr. Frank's baby. Now I know the good white folks around here don't want no scandal around like that. So let it be. I'm walking out of here, and I done warned you. The way I see it, since you the judge and the jury, oh, we gonna do this out of the Woo! I wanna say something real quick, that was great. Um, the, 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 the play we were talking about was called Blessings that James also produced. Yes. I had to get that in. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Blessing. Blessing was the first one that uh, uh, that uh, we we did and uh, we had to change the script because we wrote uh, uh, my good friend Charles Golden uh, into uh, that play. And uh, a great writer, Gwen Wright, I mean, she is so brilliant. Yes, she is. Uh, about that. But uh, let me do one thing, and we're gonna we, we're not going anywhere. But I I got to do the television thing, and it's an absolute pleasure having you on the show, uh, Marlon and Michelle. Uh, and I I tell you that this is absolutely fantastic, and we're gonna have to do this again. Uh, we're not going anywhere, audience, right now. Uh, but uh, we only got about 15 seconds of TV left. And uh, but uh, uh, thank you so much. Thank you so much. And uh, so uh, and, and now let's get back to finish this conversation. Yeah. So <laughs> blessing was the was the was the first one that uh, that uh, we were that uh, we did. Yeah. And uh, I I think we did that play twice. I'm not 100 percent sure. Yes, uh, uh, we did. Um, it was it was really good. We should have did a little short film for that one too. Maybe we will. Who knows? But um, I had told the audience earlier uh, what the topic was about. It was family and illegal abortions is what it was mm -hmm. about. 
But um, the Effie one was really good too. Effie was also about family and uh, discrimination. So both of the uh, uh, the films, well, that was a play. The one you just saw, that was a play. We didn't show you the short film. If you no, want to see but, that. But the short film was uh, based Effie. On, on, on Effie. And yes. uh, next time that we're on, that was a little longer uh, mm -hmm. than the uh, the short film that we have, the short, the short film was six minutes and 53 seconds. And, and so, but it was based on uh, what I just showed you a few minutes ago. It's just, it's absolute pleasure working with my cousin, working with these great actors. And, and I get an opportunity to be a part of it as executive director. Uh, they are a great actors and actress. And um, we're going to do a lot more things uh, together, Marlon. Yes. Uh, yes. And and one of the things, uh, so we, we're here, we're not going to end this broadcast right now. Uh, you're working on a few things uh, right now yourself. Uh, yes. Um, well, we just finished up another short. This one is like 24 minutes. It's called Salvation Love. Okay, so she, she's breaking up at the time. Uh, let, can, you, can you do it again, Marlon? Because you kind of broke up. Okay, can you hear me now? Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, we just finished up Salvation Love. And it's also, it's about a middle-aged woman. And it's also about homelessness. And it's, um, it's you know, it, it's, it's a good time for that type of film that's happening right now in the world. Um, and then also, you know, I do spoken word and um, I enjoy doing that. And I've worked with James, uh, with the uh, J.C. Cooley Foundation. Uh, we would do skits with the kids. We did a lot of great stuff with the kids. I really miss that. You might have to go ahead and bring that back. But again, we got interrupted by that COVID pandemic, but we're coming back. Isn't that right, James? Yeah, we we, we certainly getting ready to, uh, to put that program back in full swing because uh, all the things that we work with with the kids, uh, we brought, brought theater in there. Uh, we talked. You talked about spoken word. We're talking about building character. You're talking about mentorship. Well, uh, most importantly, uh, mission trips where we take the kids and their families along with, uh, we partner with churches and we take them on mission trips to Mexico where uh, they build, believe it or not, build a, a, a complete house in nine hours. Nine hours. Uh, the only uh, only uh, thing in that we we send a team over there uh, probably four or five days earlier to lay the foundation, the cement, and then we take out the families over on a Saturday uh, to Mexico, and by the time we finish, uh, nine hours later, we turn the keys over to a family in need. All of this build teamwork. It also builds. Uh, uh, work ethic, and it also give uh, our youth and young adults and families a sense of, hey, we are all in this together. Uh, we all have to work together. Mm -hmm. And uh, I want to get that started back, but especially the inspirational references uh, that uh, that we was doing. We started out uh, thinking that uh, Michelle and I started out thinking that if we started, I mean, if we get 10 kids, uh, that that would be great. And we'll pay for everybody breakfast, you know, and that was initial thought with the J.C. Cooley Foundation. Our first program, Marlon, when we just advertised a little bit, and, and I had said I'm paying for everybody breakfast, uh, we had over 68 folks there. Right. <laughs> and, it's and, a lot. <laughs> and it's going uh, every sense. And so it, we had it on a weekly basis where families, young adults, kids, uh, just people just coming in because it's inspirational. We talk about the Lord. We talk about all of these things. We talk about team building. I believe that we need that in the world today. So I believe yes. that we need to start that again. And I also need believe that we need to... Um, get our kids back out where the public speak in and they're able to convey themselves uh, and and do certain things case in point 
Spokesman. And one more thing I just wanted to say, James. Um, I also, we shot a, it's real quick, it's only a three minutes short, but we shot about depression for the youth. And as you know now, a lot of the youth are, you know, being depressed again because of that pandemic. And it's just a, you know, hopefully one day we can show it, but it's only three minutes uh, about depression with the youth. I, I say, uh, why don't we do this, Mom? Uh, okay. Depending on the, the program next week. Okay. Uh, I'll get you back on uh, maybe about 10 minutes. Uh, and um, I looked at that short uh, mm -hmm. the, the, that, that, that you all are making. And I, I think we need to show that to the world. Mm -hmm. I think they need to see that. If that's, if you okay with that. I'm uh, because, fine. <laughs> because, uh, yes. We are experiencing a, a extreme rise in the epidemic of mental health, suicide, mm -hmm. uh, just craziness. People we take kids, pr pretty much kids, 18, 20 year old going out buying mm -hmm. rifles. So we, we, we need to get the word out there. We need help. We need to um, get professionals. Uh, mm -hmm. and we, we, we're pleading for all of that. And uh, that short film that uh, you and Amari um, yes. guys made is so important. And I, I do want to show that real soon. Sounds good. <laughs> so, uh, Marlon, I want to thank you and my great uh, co host, Michelle, uh, for taking the time to interview me today. And uh, I had fun. Uh, this is the first time that uh, I can say that I was a little nervous on my own show. <laughs> <laughs> what? You so, I did not know what you guys were going to ask me, uh, but um, I got to always be true from the heart. Uh, be true from the heart. And, uh, you know, this was uh, absolutely fantastic. And so uh, yes. I want to thank I want to thank you again. Uh, one day next week, or maybe the following week, okay. we can uh, get you back on and we talk a little bit about uh, uh, depression. Maybe we can reach out to uh, some folks. Uh, and if a uh, listening audience, I see that we still got a lot of you guys still listening. Uh, mental health professionals, uh, yes. professionals to come on and talk about this and also give uh, our viewers uh, uh, insight. I would love that to happen because we all have to work together uh, to help overcome these issues, these problems, and also bring awareness that these things do happen. So I want everybody to always dream big, think big, and be big at everything that you do. We've got to bring this to an end right now. I don't want to, uh, but um, Thank you so much. I want everybody to have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. Uh, the James Cooley Show, It's Your Life, E360 TV, has expanded Tuesday through Friday now. And uh, we got a lot of other things going on as well. 12 o'clock Pacific Standard Time. You know, so uh, thank you for watching. Yes. Ring big, thank ring you. big, and be big. Marlon, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. It's and thank life. you. Dr. Cool. <laughs> I'll talk to you later. Thanks. Oh.